So in a previous video, uh, we wrote some uh, neural network code uh, to work with the MNIST data set of handwritten digits. So the idea was to uh, yeah, write a neural network that could, that could recognize, for example, this as a 5. And so what I want to do in this video is use a, a, a modern um, machine learning library called Keras uh, to do the same thing. So basically, we've written our own code. Now we're going to use some professionally written code to do the same thing. So uh, we start with a new notebook. Um, and I'm going to call this uh, Keras uh, MNIST. And uh, in order to get uh, started uh, with Keras, I googled uh, Keras and MNIST, and I, I found this uh, web page here that you can see. Um, and so I'm going to use this as, as sort of a starting point. Uh, but the first thing I want to do here uh, is to import a little bit of the code that we used uh, from the last time. So uh, we're going to use the same X and Y data uh, that uh, we extracted from this data set. Uh, so I'm going to move that in here in a separate code. So we have our X values, which are the pixels, um, and the labels here are in the, in the first uh, column of this data set. Okay, so we have our X and Y. We're going to use that from our own code. And now we're going to go in here and see um, what else we need. So preparing the data, that's basically uh, what we did in, uh, with, with these lines of code here. We're going to need to add one more little bit. Uh, and that is, uh, if I look at my old code here, we have the labels, um, but we need to make them into Y values here. Uh, and so we used a pandas uh, function called get dummies, but Keras actually has a way of uh, uh, another way of doing that for us. And so that is um, somewhere down here. I just have to. Uh, so it's uh, two categoric calls. So remember that your labels are the numerals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 9, and we want to one hot encode it. Um, so I can use this line here, uh, in order to do this and I call this labels. So I need to change that. And of course, then I need to import this two categoricals. Um, so that's here. So I need this line in up here with my import statements. Okay, so I have my X and Y now. And so if I go back um, and look at what other code I have here, um, basically, uh, Keras does a lot of this for me. So the batching it does, as we'll see, um, so I don't have to worry about that. So, and of course, all the activation functions and things like that are built in. Um, so I basically, uh, just have to define uh, my neural network. So if I go over here and go down here, that's what we would call build the model. So this is where I set up um, the network. So I'm going to go in here. Let's, uh, let's actually run these two just to make sure everything is working. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. And so uh, the nice thing about Keras is that we can use uh, GPUs instead of CPUs. So GPUs are graphical processing units instead of central processing units or CPUs, and it makes the, the whole thing run a lot faster. So I have to go in here to change run type and select GPUs. And I can do this because Keras is, is set up uh, with GPU. Okay, so I should probably just to be safe, uh, I should restart my runtime and run everything. So I get a warning error here, that's nothing to worry about, you may not even get it. 
And let's see, got my first error message, and that is because yes, I'm using still using pandas. Um, so I have to import my pandas as pd. Then I have to run this again, and now it should work. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so now I have to go in and build my model. And so uh, this, this uh, network here has three layers. Uh, so, well, four layers depending on how you call the input, right? So it has two hidden layers in addition to the output layer. Uh, and to, to match what we had before, we need one hidden layer. So I'm going to remove one of the two hidden layers and we uh, used the sigmoid activation function instead of the relu. So I have to change this to sigmoid and also the output layer we used a sigmoid function. Okay, but so that these are uh, four lines here is basically the same as, as, as this stuff right here. Uh, so I define um, the various uh, nodes. One thing, one uh, change I should made here, make here is that uh, I use a hundred hidden nodes here and so I have to change 64 to 100 but other than that we now have the same network. Okay, so that's the model, and then uh, I have to tell it what optimizer what, what to use and, and the loss function and so forth. And so uh, Keras calls this building the model, uh, or compiling the model, sorry. So I take this code and add it here. The optimizer, uh, we used uh, gradient descent, and so uh, the more technical term for this is stochastic gradient descent, but that's basically what we had. And our loss function, as you'll remember, uh, is a mean squared error. And the thing we're interested in, in the end, is the accuracy. So how many times do we uh, predict a label correctly? Uh, and so that's uh, that's an appropriate metric here. Okay, uh, so now we've defined our model, we've compiled the model. That that means we've we've uh, chosen uh, how we're gonna train. And so the next thing we now have to do is to train the model here. So I'm gonna copy this code and put it here. And uh, we now have to remember so so the uh, what we called everything. So here we have our x values and we want to fit these to y values and this is the number of epochs which we've uh, talked about plenty of time and this automatically does batching so the thing I need to tell it is what batch size to use. And so uh, I think I'll just go with this 32 which they which they used for their MNIST example. So that should basically be it. Let's try to run it and see what happens. Uh, I get an error. Oh yes, because I'm using, uh, for example, sequential. And so, of course, I have to go in and also import that. And I can see I also use dense, uh, which is the terminology basically for uh, all the nodes and the layers being connected to all the other nodes. So I will need that as well. So I'm going to add this here. Oops, I'm going to run, run that. Uh, I don't need to run this again. And now this should work. Let's see. OK, I get a lot of warnings. Uh, but warnings are different from errors. So warnings we can live with. And as you can see, it's actually working here now. So it's already run three epochs. And you can see, ah, okay, so here's our five epochs, and we can see that after five epochs, we've all, we are up to an accuracy of about 
So this is, uh, we can see our loss is going down, and here we have our 66%. Uh, of course, in the previous version here, we ran 100 epochs, so it's not surprising that the accuracy is, is not quite as good. Um, so let's try to increase it a little bit. Uh, maybe let's, just to see what happens, uh, let's try to run 10 epochs. You can see the warnings now disappeared. The, the program runs completely fine despite the warnings. And uh, okay, let's just see where this goes. Okay, so after 10 epochs, uh, we're already up uh, to an accuracy of 78%, or actually 79 more, which is, uh, which is still not too bad. Um, but obviously with more epochs, we could, we could get uh, a better accuracy. But let's actually um, uh, go back and, and change one thing. So you noticed here that in the, in the implementation here, uh, that they suggested they use something called the Atom Optimizer, which is uh, similar to uh, Gradient Descent, but uh, it's, they're using it here for a reason. This is actually a better optimizer, and so in order to demonstrate that, let's just see what happens if I just change the way we're taking the steps uh, and increasing, uh, decreasing the loss. So we can see even already after one epoch, we're up to 75% accuracy. So this is a these this method is much more efficient uh, at taking good steps. Okay, so after 10 epochs, we're already up now to 91%, uh, uh, which is actually pretty good. Uh, one final thing, you'll, you'll notice that we didn't have to define the learning rate, uh, which, we off, which we're often playing around with. Uh, and so that can be, uh, the, the reason we don't define it is because there is a default value. Uh, so there's still a learning rate in here, uh, but if you want to change it, for example, we can go in here to the Keras documentation um, and um, search for, for example, the Atom Optimizer. And as you'll see here, right, the, the Atom Optimizer already has a default learning rate uh, together with some other uh, parameters that go into the Atom Optimizer. Uh, so if we want to change the learning rate, uh, we can copy this line here uh, and go in here uh, before we define the model and change the default values. Uh, so if you don't want to touch these, they don't actually have to be there, right? But if you want to increase the learning rate, for example, by a factor of 10, this is how we would do it. So as a final step, uh, I then have to actually use the line I defined here. So if, if this is in quotation marks, it, it uses the defaults. If I want to change the defaults here, then I have to use um, uh, this line here. Okay, so let's uh, see. Oh, the, the other thing, of course, is I'm using... Um, well, let's try to see if that works actually first. So let's try to run it. Uh, okay, so... I have to go up here and say from Keras import optimizers. So I'll run that. And let's try to run this. Okay, so what happens here, I stopped the video and Googled a little bit, and so it appears that the um, Keras documentation here is not quite correct. Uh, so they, what they want here is, is LR instead of learning rate. So let's try this. So as we can see, the actually the accuracy actually decreased, uh, right? So this this learning rate just is is too large. But anyway, this is the way uh, you can you can change it if you want to.